These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Okay, so what were your thoughts here? So you know you can start with, um, they're all one pod, there aren't any of the, the receptive conditions. So in part A, all of the offspring have the one pod characteristic, which makes it seem like both parents are Homozygous for the one pod characteristic. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then they can also be, those other combinations, they could be for that also, right? Um, like what? Like they could, one of them could be heterozygous. You mean for the peas? Uh-huh. Well, let's see. Ah. I thought you were wrong, but you were right and I was wrong. That's right. One of them could be heterozygous. Because even if this parent passes on the recessive gene, that'll still be dominated by the dominant gen gene from over here. So you were correct about that. So these are the three different possibilities for the P gene. That's right. So at least one of the parents has to be homozygous dominant. At least one of the parents. Right. Is that the question? My question is, can one of them be homozygous dominant and one of them be homozygous I'm still making mistakes, and you're still getting it right. Good. So there's lots of possibilities here. Uh -huh. And I think that's where I got confused, because it doesn't seem, once you draw the permanent square, it makes sense, but. Because all you need is to get one dominant gene to have the trait. Okay. So you're absolutely right. Um, it's hard to draw a little case piece. Yeah, that was confusing. OK, um, so basically, one of the parents has to be homozygous dominant, and then the other parent can be anything. Okay. To, to, to cut a long story short, one of the parents has to be homozygous dominant, and then the other parent could be anything. Be anything. Right. Okay, that makes sense. And then for the lead, it looks yeah. like it's a three to one ratio. Of yeah, it looks like that to me too. Good. Dominance and recessive. So. Would that give us the three to one ratio? Uh, yes. Yeah. If you're not sure, you can make the Punnett square. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, we want them to be, we want to know, so how many of them would be normal? Well. This one would be normal, this one would be normal, and this one would be normal, and this one would be wrinkled. So there is a ratio of three normal to one wrinkled. Okay. So that was absolutely right. Of course, 318 to 98 is not exactly three to one, but you wouldn't right. expect in actual conditions to get the exact right ratio. So you have to round that off to the closest ratio that seems to work. That seems very close to a three to one ratio. So how can you do this? Well, you can just do it by trial and error. You can take a guess as to what the genotype is and then use the Punnett square to check it. However, to save time, you should probably memorize uh, a ratio like this. You should probably memorize that if you make two heterozygotes, that gives you the three to one ratio. Yeah. Good. Okay. And is the reason that those aren't exactly three to one ratios, is that because of other combinations? Well, let me ask you this. Um, Let's say um, some of the, 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 the a man and a woman are starting a family mm -hmm. uh, and they're planning to have a bunch of kids. Well, what do you expect to be the ratio of boys to girls? 50-50. But do you expect it to be exactly 50-50? No, it's not, it's not because of any fancy crossing over or recombination. It's just that um, the actual values don't always match the expected values. That's why it's called probability and not certainty, basically. Yeah. 
So all the Punnett square tells us is that we have, um, every time we make two heterozygotes, there is a 75% chance of getting the normal phenotype, and there's a 25% chance of getting the wrinkled phenotype. That means if you have lots and lots of offspring, that almost exactly 75% uh, of them will be normal, and almost exactly 25% of them will be wrinkled. Um, but most, most, most of the time, you're not going to have millions of offspring. So the, yeah. the actual um, outcomes don't become exactly the same as the probabilities. So um, when, any time you have a kid, there's a 50% chance of a boy and 50% chance of a girl. But that doesn't mean that every family has to have 50% boys and 50% girls. So this is not, um, so the fact that these are not exact has nothing to do with crossing over or um, mutation or anything. It's just the way probabilities work. So you, but you can see, though, the only way you can even do this type of thing is if you have an animal that has lots of offspring, or if you look at lot, lots of offspring. If the animal only had two or three offspring, then there would be a good chance that the actual outcome wouldn't be close to what probability would expect anyway. Mm 